Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Philip, and I'm a photographer based in the Midwest. And on this channel, we talk about landscapes, nature, and traveling, and how those go together. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to improve your photography. Okay, so you're either just starting out on your photographic journey or you've been doing this for a little while and maybe you're feeling um, a little stagnant in your photography and that's why you clicked on this video. So I'm going to help you to get to that next level in whatever stage in your photography that you are to improve your work and just get better overall. So how do we do that? And my number one tip, and basically the only tip that we'll be talking about in this video is being objective about your work. So what does that mean? How, how do we be more objective about the work that we're doing? One of the things that I think holds us back as photographers is that we are attached to our work. And basically what happens is, is that when you go to locations, um, at least in, my own personal uh, field or genre of photography being landscapes, you go to these places, um, you have these really cool things happen, you know, either the sunset or sunrise is absolutely amazing and it's mind blowing or, you know, you're, you're meeting people and, and you have these feelings attached to these photographs, right? So when you get home and you get on the computer and you're editing, those feelings and those emotions come rushing back, which is such an amazing part about photography. And it's one of the reasons why I love it most. And I'm sure you really enjoy that part about photography too. But unfortunately, when it comes to learning and growing, these feelings get in the way of us being objective. So one of the things that I've come to do after having done this for a few years, I actually like to let the photo sit for a while. So what do I mean by that? So I go on a trip, I take the photos, and then I come home, and instead of editing the photos right away when, it, when it's fresh, I let those photos sit for a couple days because what that helps me do personally is it helps me reset my mind to be more objective about the work that I'm doing. We're going to talk about these photos from my most recent trip to Sedona, Arizona. If you wanna know more about that trip, we just finished up with that vlog series uh, last week, so I'll go ahead and link those vlogs up here. So uh, if you're interested in vlogging content, you can go check that out. However, you don't need to uh, do any of that to understand what's going on in this video. So let's go on to the first image. So this first image you see here is um, of Cathedral Rock. It's the first image that I made when I got to Sedona so this is an image that I knew I kind of I kind of wanted in my portfolio from Sedona you have this nice area where there are some great reflection opportunities to get Cathedral Rock in now this photo is pretty good however there are some things that I, I you know I don't really love about it so let's talk about that now in the in the foreground you have this you have this rock here that I think really anchors the image. I always want to try to find some sort of foreground element. I really think that grounds the image and kind of locks it locks it in place. And what that does is your eye hits that foreground image first, and then it, I usually try to find something in the midground, and then obviously something in the background for your eyes to rest on, and that kind of just brings the image all together. So in this image you have your your rock here in the foreground and then you have the reflection of cathedral rock as your midground and then cathedral rock itself as your background and i think all of these three elements work together very nicely to create a complete photograph now on this particular evening the sky wasn't doing anything very exciting so i composed for that in mind however when i got home I realized that uh, there's a lot of excess and dead space towards the bottom of the screen, um, which you're seeing here now, that I didn't like. So the, the final image ended up being a four by five crop, which kind of gets rid of some of that dead spacing. And I really think it's important to not only include what's important to you in a photograph, but also 
limit the things that are in a photograph as well to make your message more clear. So let's move on to the next photograph. This next image was also taken in the same location and what I want to stress to you is to not settle for, for one image. Once you have a, an image and it's you know signed, sealed, and delivered, there's no reason to just sit there and keep taking that image, especially in this situation when I'm shooting in blue hour, the light's really not changing much. So it doesn't it doesn't benefit me to continue to shoot the same image over and over. So what I do is, you know, or what you can do if it's a situation where there's clouds and you're not really sure um, if the sky is going to explode or not, get get an image, leave your camera there, and then continue to explore around the area. That way, if for whatever reason the, the light does have a dramatic change, you can just run over and you don't have to recompose or anything. Um, but this is another image that I found that has a nice foreground element and the, the cactus. And then it also has some leading lines in the rocks that kind of uh, sweep through. And then that leads your eye again to Cathedral Rock in the background. So you'll see in this video a some repeating elements in, in my work. And this is just the way that my mind works, right? I mean, I'm not telling you that this is how you have to create your own photographs. It's your art, you create your your art the way that you want to but this is just the way that i see the world and if that potentially helps you cool that that's great and then that's that's the whole point of this video so um and again this was uh this was on an evening in which the sky wasn't very dull so this photograph i also took uh some creative liberty and decided to um composite in the milky way which i'll show you that here now and that's just me kind of having some fun with with the whole situation, you know. Sometimes the conditions aren't always going to work in your favor. Um, on this particular trip, uh, the moon was up throughout the entire evening through Milky Way season, this being in March when I went on this trip. So I decided that uh, it would be cool to kind of do some composites. So that's also uh, what I do, what I did. So I sprinkled that in for S's and G's. <laughs> And so uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and move on to the next image. This next image is of Bell Rock at sunrise. So um, this area is very, very uh, interesting and unique and quite open actually. And this was another day that I was not blessed or fortunate enough to have uh, clouds in the sky. So really for me, when that happens, I usually try to minimize the sky as much as possible, right? So that what that is what attracted me to this framing composition. So um, let's start in the foreground. So you have this, this desert plant material down here in the foreground, which again, that's our anchor. And then if you look, we have this path highlighted by these arrows. And that is what leads your eye through the scene up into the background and our main subject of Bell Rock. And again, it all kind of gets tied together, I think, and is a, a, a much more strong and complete photograph by composing in such a way that that takes away some of the negative space that would have been created by an empty and dull sky. So I, I, I really actually enjoy this image and I think it's very strong. And, and, and again, that's my own, my own objective opinion about this photograph. You might not, you may or may not like it. And you know, that's, that's totally cool. Either way, you know, art is subjective and I'm, I'm not necessarily here to show off my work or anything like that. It's mostly just to show you what my thought pattern is. And like I said, you'll see a lot of patterns with my work because this is the way that I see nature and how I see nature through a camera. So you'll see a lot of um, repeating patterns through my work of, I usually try to have a strong foreground element, some sort of leading lines through the middle ground and then a strong and obvious uh, background subject. So uh, let's move on to the next image. This photograph is a, is a great example in my opinion on um, why the human element and scale is is very important so this is in uh birthing cave and i think that the rocks and the the texture do a very nice job of leading you to the subject which is me the person in this image and it allows the viewer you to get the idea of a story of this is a person in this rocky area that is enjoying a nice sunrise 
and which I was. It was a nice sunrise, and it was it was very peaceful and, and, and nice to enjoy. Um, so you you have a lot of these different elements that make up a foreground of these rocks that lead you to to the subject to me, which also and then you see oh what is this person looking at, and then that takes you to the background. Um, and I'm gonna throw up a comparison here of an image with myself in the photograph and then an image where I edited myself out. And you can really see sometimes there's situations in which a human element is, is almost necessary because I, this is one example in my opinion where I feel like um, if you take out the human element, this image is nowhere near as impactful as, as what, it, what it is. So that's something to consider is that if you're not necessarily really sure if you should add yourself to a photo or not, uh, we shoot digital, so we're lucky with that. So you can always just take it, and if you don't like it, don't don't use it. So um, let's move on to the next photograph. So this is a uh, another location in which uh, Cathedral Rock is the main subject, and and I'll just be honest with you, Cathedral Rock is a is a great subject because of the way the light moves through Sedona. Um, Cathedral Rock is a great subject to focus on for sunset, so that's a little bonus travel tip in this video. Um, in this particular image, I think there's a nice strong foreground with the kind of, I guess, choppy water, I guess you could say. So you have this texture of the water as your foreground element that, that grounds the image, right? It's the first thing you see. And then you have these leading lines that this channel of water is moving through that leads your eye through the image. And then you have your eyes resting in the background on Cathedral Rock, which is catching absolutely amazing golden hour light and just, oh, beautiful chef's kiss. Uh, so yeah, I think this image is also very, very strong. Uh, it's one of my favorite images uh, from, the, from the trip. And I think there's, I mean, I don't know. You you let you, you let me know how you feel about it, but uh, yeah, I mean, I really enjoy this image, like I said. So let's just go ahead and move on to the next one, rapid fire. So this next image is an image where I feel like I fell short a little bit, and but we're gonna talk about why why it, it falls short. So you have here you have here. Um, a nice kind of view, but it doesn't necessarily make a strong photograph, right? So I'm going to talk about some elements that I that I do like about this is that I personally really love finding triangles in nature to put in frames because a triangle is a very strong shape for the human eye. And not only that, but it also provides a leading line. So you'll see that there's a line that kind of darts down and cuts through the bottom center of the frame leading your eye down into the valley in my opinion and what kind of catches your eye to the road which provides some scale for the area for how high up i am and then it leads to the background the things that i feel fall short in this image are that 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 leading line created by that triangle leads you to in my opinion nothing or more dead space and i think it's really important like i said before to not only decide what to include in an image, but also it's very important to dis to decide what you're going to exclude from an image as well. And uh, this is a example of why not having clouds in your sky, I think hurts. There is some decent color in the sky, but I, th I think it falls short. Now, thankfully for me, I've practiced these techniques so much that I'm able to see them in the field. So I, I took this picture and, and something just didn't quite feel right. And it, it took me kind of a second to figure out kind of what was going on. And in, in the background, there's there's a lack of light hitting my background, my, my kind of my main subjects of, you know, these kind of rock butte type structures in the background. And that, lacked a lot of depth and I knew that I didn't like that so I, I did have to wait for, for the sun to come up and then also I wanted to get rid of a lot of that dead space so I was able to make some adjustments in the field and then came in, came away with an image that's, that's similar and slightly different but one that I'm, I'm ultimately more happy with and I'll show you that image now and so if you kind of compare those two images you can kind of see that they're, they're very similar but there's some small 
um, tweaks and differences, which I personally feel like make the second image much stronger and I'm much happier with that overall. So let's move on to the next photograph. This next image I feel like is a classic example of a, a snapshot. Um, there are some nice elements to it, so let's talk about that. I, I do feel like that the subject that these kind of mountain, this mountain structure in the background is framed nicely by these two trees, which I feel like help focus your uh, vision onto the subject. The thing that I don't like about this image so much is that the foreground is, is very weak, and because of that, it's almost, uh, it almost really doesn't register very much for your, for your brain, right? So like, it's just kind of an afterthought. It's like, oh look, there's some dirt down here, but it really doesn't register your brain. So since your brain doesn't become grounded and provide a sense of place for the image in that foreground, your eye immediately goes to that background and you lose a sense of, of depth in my opinion. And this image, comes out a bit flat and two-dimensional and which sometimes that can happen and there's something there's sometimes there's nothing that you can do about that but i just think in my work and my my strongest photographs i personally want to have that depth and a good transition from foreground middle ground to background so this is just a nice image to, to have and to remember some of those beautiful conditions that I did get with some clouds, um, but it's not an image that I would rush to put into my portfolio and show as my best work. So um, let's move on to the next photograph. Uh, this, this image is another example of how good light doesn't always make a good photograph. And you, we're running into some of the same problems as the last photograph and that there's there's no real depth to it because you're lacking that that foreground um, element, right? So you have this great light on the mountain in the background and you have this town that does, you know, you have Sedona that does provide some scale, but without that foreground, I feel like this image ends up being um, very flat and, and lacking in depth and real impact. So it's a nice image for me personally to have in my, you know, whatever, my memory catalog from this, from this trip, but it's not an image that I plan on, you know, sharing or, you know, pr printing as my best work to hang in my, in my own home. Again, I was able to troubleshoot on this morning because of just some of the things that I'm seeing and like, these alarm bells, I guess, that are going off in my head saying that, hmm, something about this photo doesn't feel right. And so what I ended up doing was that I decided to add myself into this photograph. So I went a little bit, a little bit wider to kind of give you the view, the viewer a sense of place. And then you have the human element, which provides, um, I, I think, a great storytelling element. And then you still have the houses providing a sense of scale and then the mountain in the background. So there's a nice grounding foreground element of the rock and then myself. And then you have the mid ground being the town of Sedona and then the background being the mountains catching light. So I think it works really nicely. And, it, and it, this is the other really great thing about adding a human to your photograph is, is the human element tells a story. It allows the viewer to potentially put themselves as oh, them sitting there and enjoying a sunrise or sunset, whatever it may be. So that's just something to consider to add to your own work if you are not already doing so. This is an exercise that I think it's really important for all photographers, no matter what your skill level, if you want to keep growing and progressing your craft. So if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. I would appreciate it. Comment down below. What are some of the ways that you feel that you regularly push yourself to grow and become a better photographer and if you're not subscribed already go ahead and do so because there is a lot more photography vlogs and informational content like you saw in this video that are going to help you become a better photographer in the future and as always thanks for watching bye